We are going to find the limit as x approaches pi of the natural log of 2 plus cosine x times the natural log of the absolute value of sine x minus sine squared of x, all divided by the absolute value of cosine of x to the power of the natural log of absolute value of x minus pi minus 1. Now at first you might think this limit is impossible. This limit is not impossible, but it is impossible to do with the standard methods that we learned in a calculus class. If you try to use L'Hopital's rule on this limit, where you have the product of two natural log functions, you're only going to make your life harder. The way that we need to solve a limit like this is by turning that natural log and the cosine and the sine into a Taylor series approximation. That will turn this trig and natural log limit that we don't like evaluating into a polynomial that we know how to deal with much easier. The problem is that right now the limit is approaching pi, and we don't know our Taylor series expansions around pi very well. We prefer them being centered around zero. So let's see if we can turn this x approaching pi into some variable approaching zero. To do that, we can let u equal x minus pi. If we do this, then as x approaches pi, u will approach pi minus pi, which means it will approach zero. This also means that x is equal to u plus pi. And now we can plug this into our limit. So this limit is equal to the limit as u approaches zero of natural log two, and then we have a cosine of x, which will be the cosine of u plus pi. Well, we know the cosine of something plus pi is going to evaluate to the negative cosine, which means this will turn into two minus cosine of u. Then we have the natural log. Inside we have a sine x, which is sine of u plus pi. Sine of a variable plus pi will again turn into the negative sine, but because it's in the absolute value, it doesn't matter. We can leave it as a positive sine u. And then we have minus sine squared. Once again, that'll be negative sine, but when we square it, it'll become positive anyway, so we just have minus sine squared u. And then we divide. Absolute value of cosine x. Once again, this will turn into the negative cosine. Doesn't matter, because it's in the absolute value. And then we have natural log of x minus pi gives us our u, and then minus 1. The last thing that we want to deal with before we turn this into a Taylor series expansion is all these absolute values that are bothering us here. So let's see if there's a way that we can substitute some variable v being equal to the absolute value of u. First of all, what does v approach as u approaches 0? Well, u is going to go to 0. The absolute value of u will also go to 0, but it will only go to zero from the right, because we know the absolute value function is always positive. So we have this. Let's see if we can turn all of our u's here into absolute value of u, so that we can make this substitution. First, we have the cosine of u. Well, because u is approaching zero, the cosine around zero is always positive. The cosine of negative x equals the cosine of x. So around here, this will always be positive. We can write it as the cosine absolute value of u. We can do the same thing with this sine of u, because we have an absolute value on the outside. If we do the absolute value of sine u, that's the same as the sine of the absolute value of u. This way, the input will always end up being positive, and when we have the sine of a positive input, it will be positive. So it's the same as taking the absolute value. We do the same thing here, because when we square a negative number, it becomes positive. So if we put the absolute value there, it doesn't change anything. And once again, with this cosine u, these absolute values on the outside don't matter because the cosine is always positive near zero. And then we can put the absolute value here because cosine of negative x equals cosine of x. Now let's turn our limit into terms of v. v approaches zero from the right. We have natural log of 2 minus cosine v, natural log of sine v minus sine squared v all over cosine v to the natural log v minus 1. And now that our limit is in this form, it's time to break out the Taylor series. So let's go through each of the functions in this limit one by one and see if we can turn them into a Taylor series approximation that is easier to deal with. Let's start with this natural log part. We have the natural log of 2 minus cosine of v. Well, we know that the cosine around 0 is going to be approximately 1 minus v squared over 2. So we have the natural log of 
2 minus 1 minus v squared over 2, because these are the first two terms of the cosine Taylor series expansion. Anything beyond this, v to the fourth over 4 factorial, is just too small to care about as v approaches 0. So if we simplify this a little bit, we get the natural log. 2 minus 1 gives us 1, and then we have negative negative becomes plus v squared over 2. So you have the natural log of 1 plus something. And this, again, has a Taylor series expansion. In this case, the natural log Taylor series is x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4. But really, we don't care about anything beyond the first x term. So really, we can just write this as v squared over 2. Obviously, this will be an approximately equals. But again, when we think about v squared squared v to the fourth, that's going to be too small to care about. So we only need to consider this first term. So this whole natural log part, natural log of 2 minus cosine v, that's going to be about v squared over 2. Now let's look at the natural log of sine v. We know that sine v is approximately equal to v, which means that the natural log of sine v is going to be about the natural log of v. Once again, the v cubed over 3 factorial, too small to care about. We can do the same thing here. The sine squared of v, that's going to be approximately v squared. And now let's look at the bottom here. We have the cosine of v to the natural log of v. And we don't like dealing with a function to a function power. So what we can do is rewrite this as e to the natural log cosine v and then times natural log v. So now we can deal with this a little easier. This is going to be e to the power of cosine v is 1 minus v squared over 2. So we have natural log 1 minus v squared over 2 ln v. And then once again, we can use the Taylor series expansion for the natural log. We have a minus this time, so it'll be e to the minus v squared over 2 natural log of v. And remember, we're also doing a minus 1. So if we do e to this minus 1, e to this minus 1, e to this minus 1. What's the Taylor series expansion for e to the x? Well, e to the x is going to be about 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. Again, we only need to consider the first few terms. So this is going to be about equal to this e to the something part will be 1 plus, and then our x is this term, so negative v squared over 2 ln v. All the terms after that are insignificant, and then we do a minus 1. So this 1, this negative 1 cancel, we just get equals negative v squared over 2, natural log of v. Again, because v is going to 0, this Taylor series approximation is also valid because v squared over 2 ln v will approach 0 as v approaches 0. That means this entire bottom here, this whole thing is approximately negative v squared over 2 ln v. So now that we have our limit with all of these approximations, it's time to plug them in and simplify. All right, we're ready to use these approximations to simplify our limit. So let's write out all of the information that we have. We'll split up the limit into two parts. So let's consider this part first. We have this first part is v squared over 2, and then times the natural log of v over this whole part becomes negative v squared over 2 natural log v. And then we have the next part. We have minus the limit as v approaches 0 from the right of v squared over negative v squared over 2 ln v. If we look at this first part, very, very nice. The top and the bottom entirely cancel out except for this one negative sign, which means that this first limit evaluates to negative 1. Now for the second limit. We have a minus and a minus. We can cancel that out to be a plus. And then once again, we have v squared and v squared on the top and bottom. Those will cancel. All we're left with is a constant and a natural log in the denominator. We know that v is going to 0 from the right, which means that natural log, as it approaches 0, is going to go to negative infinity. So we have a finite number divided by negative infinity, which means this entire part is actually just going to go to zero. So we don't have to consider this part of the limit, and all we're left with is our answer of negative one. So if you see a limit like this, 
where you know you're not going to be able to use L'Hopital's rule, start thinking about what functions in the limit have Taylor series expansions that will turn it into something you know how to deal with. If you can turn the limit into something centered around zero and then use those Taylor series expansions to simplify the limit, you'll be able to get to your answer just like this.